Hi everyone, it's Delizia from Delizia Naturally here. I'm going to do a video today um, about how I make the tallow soap. Um, this will be from sheep tallow and the sheep tallow is from box gum grazing. It's from a regenerative farm and it's going to be this soap that doesn't have any fragrance in it. Uh, so I have a few customers that really like that soap because they have extra sensitive skin and it doesn't have any fragrance and the sheep tallow is amazing for their skin as well. Um, so what I'll do is from beginning to end, I'll show you how I mix the lye and then how I mix that lye water, car going past. Even though you can see the bushland behind me, um, there is a road behind me. So there's the Australian bush behind me, but there is a road there. Uh, so I'm going to make the, the soap from scratch. Uh, mixing the lye water into uh, the sheep tallow, uh, pouring it into the mould and then cutting it. Um, so a couple of things with tallow soap is that I find the soap cutter, uh, the wire isn't strong enough because the soap is so dense. So even if I cut it early, I find that the soap cutter, the wire snaps often. So I've had to put a very strong fishing wire uh, on the soap cutter, which you'll see. The other thing that I want to talk about is the super fat. So for all my tallow soaps, except for the shampoo bar, I use a 7% super fat. So 7% super fat means that 7% of the sheep tallow is not transformed into soap. So there's 7% of sheep tallow that is in the soap that you are using on your skin when you wash yourself. The thing about super fat is that only when you change the super fat for a soap mixture will the lye change. Otherwise, the lye doesn't change. So I can put in my soap calculator the amount of tallow that I have. In this instance, it will be 2,000 grams, so two kilograms. And I can say the super fat is 7% and the lye calculator or the soap calculator will will calculate a number for that lye in that soap. Water is a different issue. I use a 1.2 to 1 ratio anyway, but the lye will be a certain amount. If I change the super fat, then the lye will change. Otherwise, it will not change. Just so you know, um, that's what I've discovered. The lye amount does not change in the soap unless I change the super fat. So if you change the water, it still won't change. It's only when you change the super fat. Uh, okay, so without further ado, let's begin. I've got this in my hand, so I've got to press stop somehow. Okay, so here I am about to mix the lye with the water. Sorry, there's a humming in the background. That's just the heater. It's like five degrees here in Queen Anne, uh, in Australia. So I have 259 grams of sodium hydroxide, also called lye, also called caustic soda, and 311 grams of rainwater or demineralized water. Uh, so I'm going to mix the lye into the water, never the other way around. So the way that you remember that is the snow falls on the lake which is an apt description here in Queenian because we do have snow on the mountains up in Mount Kosciuszko. Okay, so here I go. So you watch me do it slowly. I do have safety gloves and uh, glasses on. So just mixing that, you'll see it go milky and it also starts to heat. See so it go milky there. I'll just make sure I get it all out. So when you're doing this, you need to make sure that you either have stainless steel, glass or grade five plastic. So when I say grade five, in the little triangle on the base of this plastic bowl, it has a triangle and it has five in it. So this is just me mixing it. So you can see it going foamy, foamy, my mistake, milky. And you can see the steam coming off it. Oh, I hope you can. So I'm just going to pick it up and hopefully you can see the steam coming off it. You might not be able to. Mm, no, I don't think you can. 
there is definitely steam coming off it. And because the air temperature is so cold, it's even more visible, but maybe not for the camera. Okay, so that's the lie. I'm gonna leave that out here. My sheet fat that is melting on the stove, um, you can see the liquid at the base there. It's slowly melting. But you can just see how dense and fluffy and white um, that this sheet fat is. So this has been triple rendered by me. Uh, it, I put it in solid form in the fridge or in the freezer. Uh, then I, um, and usually I pre-measure it before I put it away in the freezer. And then I take it out, do one last measure in case uh, things have changed by the density or if I measured incorrectly. Uh, and then I start melting it. So this will be for the sheep tallow soap, 100% sheep tallow soap, no fragrance. It's one of the best sellers actually, because more and more I'm seeing that people want saturated fat and they also um, want a soap that doesn't have any fragrance. So I wish it would hurry up and melt because I love making soap, but um, I'll uh, join us again when, we've, uh, when we have this all melted. So you can see that the sheet tallow is almost melted. And you can see that it's like a light, and you can't really because of the stainless steel, but if it was in a white bowl, you might be able to see that. You can see how it's uh, a, like a light lemon colour. Uh, that's because of the grass-fed nature of the sheet tallow. Uh, so almost ready to make the soap. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm back. The fat has melted and we are at... Hmm. I thought it was 42, but not. Uh, let's have a look. We are at 52 degrees. The reason I'm doing it now is because I'm starting to see that the uh, tallow is going milky now, which means it's cooling down. If I wait longer, it'll be too firm. Uh, so it's 51.5, if you can see that. And the lye water, I think it was 21 last time I checked. 26 actually uh, it's moved so 25 for the lye sodium hydroxide caustic soda water and let's do the fat again it's 51.5 that's fine I'm going to mix now because like I said with the sheep tallow different from the beef tallow it does look a little bit cloudy when it's in liquid form it's cooling down um, so I'm going to mix the uh, lye into here. We may need a stick blender, we may not. I'm just going to get a whisk, back with a whisk. Um, so I'm going to mix it in. You can see here there's a little bit of like crystallization on the top. That actually doesn't matter. I've seen some soap makers strain the soap. That's part of the mixture. So I'm not going to strain it. Um, I'm just going to pour it straight in. Make sure I get all the bits out. So this is the sheet tallow soap without any fragrance. Okay, so that's all in. Make that a safe and move that aside. And I'm going to start whisking. So that is a safe enough, enough temperature. Uh, so 26 and 51, 52. Um, because if I, I've noticed that sometimes when I wait until it's cooler, it will seize and then I have to push through. So as I said, this is just the sheet tallow soap, no fragrance. And it's a 7% super fat. I'm going to get my mold ready here. I hope you can see that. What I'll do is just shift some things across. Okay, I'm going to use my stick blender. Sometimes I don't even use a stick blender for the sheet tallow soap because it... Um, it uh, saponifies quickly. You can see already that it's going quite milky. So we're at emulsion. Uh, I want to take it to trace. I'm just going to turn this down.
this is for people that have extra sensitive skin, babies, adults, anyone. Even um, You can even use it to wash your animals because it's completely safe. What I'm going to do, which I don't usually do, but I'll do for purposes of this video, is I'm going to, I'm going to now check the temperature of the mix. It's 46.2. Forty-four degrees Celsius, so between forty-four and forty-six degrees Celsius. Okay, I like that now. That's uh, saponified enough. Take this off. Make sure I get all the bits of soap. So it's very light trace. Um, when I'm dealing with sheet tallow, I don't like to make it a thick trace because I find that it moves quickly. I can already feel it on the bottom, actually. So I'll just move this over so you can see me pour it in the mould. I hope you can. I'm not tall enough to see if you can see it all, but that's okay. We will work it out. Okay, so I'm going to pour it in now. So again, this is just a sheet tallow without any fragrance. 100% sheet tallow. I'm going to show you the... Um, the calculations of what this looks like in the soap calc. I really hope you can see that. Like getting all that valuable tallow out. So uh, here we go. So this is the old-fashioned way to make the soap from the tallow. It's a cold process method. You can see I don't cook the mixture. The reason I like the cold process method is because the glycerin is intact. You don't cook it out. Um, that's why I really favour the cold process method. And to some degree, it's faster. Okay, I'll move that aside. And then I really would like to... So you can see it's already firming up on the side there. When you're doing a video, sometimes you don't know where to put your utensils halfway through. Uh, where When you don't have a video, you just kind of do it. Quickly. Okay, I'm just going to do some taps. Just to get any air bubbles out. I'm happy with that. Now, what is the time here? It is 10.40. So I will write that time down so that then I can gauge how long it takes to cure. Or, sorry, not to cure, to set in the mould before I turn it out. Um, okay. Tune back in and we'll see what the results are. Um, so this is ready to cut. You can see I've started to go through a gel phase. Um, so it's kind of translucent here to here and then on the outside it's white. I need to cut it because it will become too firm uh, with this, this sheet tallow. It's 100% sheet tallow. So this is what it will look like when it's cut. Um, and I've got my little cheat sheet here. So it is now uh, 1 p.m. So I will um, write that here so that um, I keep a record of how long it takes to cut uh, the temperature outside etc so we'll just remove it take these pins out um, this is to be honest one of my favorite parts of soap making and that is the um, the unmolding oh it's a bit the unmolding and the um, the cutting so I'll just see if I can put this off here. One of the things I like about not using a silica mould, but this lining the moulds with baking paper, is that it's so much easier to remove, uh, for me anyway, because I find that sometimes what happens is when I remove the soap from the mould, especially if it's a silica mould, and the soap's a little bit soft, it will kind of dent into the soap, and I don't like that. Um, so 
so this is it you can see it's it's actually ready to cut it's a little bit soft but um because i don't actually i don't have a proper workshop yet so i have to cut it before i leave where i'm working at the moment otherwise it will be too late um so you can see it's just a beautiful solid block of soap no fragrance with this one and i'm usually quite frugal in that all these little bits of soap you can see on the bit of paper i will clean those off and i will use those um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut it as is even with these bits here because to tell you the truth my um cheese cutter or vegetable peeler which i use to trim up the soap is being used for another soap and i don't want to cross you know cross contaminate it uh, if you like so i'm just going to move this uh, hopefully you can see it all i should have done a live video the way i'm talking it's kind of has that live feel to it doesn't it okay so again this is 100 percent tallow soap and it's uh sheep tallow if you can see this so each of my bars is a minimum of uh, 100 grams okay so i really hope you can see that because i'm filming on my own it's a bit tricky to kind of work out okay let's have a look okay yep yeah, so here we go you can see it's beautiful and white um and just pure just sheet tallow soap no fragrance um, because i haven't prepared myself properly See, I've got my hand underneath the, this side of the log because I don't want it to bend. It shouldn't, but, um, yeah. So I can already see that the – get a bit of thing on there. The, um, the wire is uh, a little bit – it's getting – it's firm to cut. So this wire here, I hope you can see it. Yeah, I think you can. This is actually fishing wire. Um, and it's a very strong rated fishing wire because I found that the wire that this soap cutter comes with is not strong enough. It's strong enough for soap that's not made of tallow, but for soap made of tallow, you need something stronger. I found I kept snapping it um, just because of the density of the tallow soap, which is a good thing because it means that the soap is going to last long. It doesn't have a lot of water content in there. It's 1.2 to 1. That's the ratio I use. Um, just a shout out to Ashley Marie Soap in America, who um, I was encouraged watching her to use the 1.2 to 1 ratio. So um, you can see it there. It's just, and to touch it, it's actually still quite warm, um, but that's that's the nature of, of the tallow soap. If I wait longer, like I said, it will, it will be difficult for me to cut and then I have to use a knife and then it's not even and etc etc so I'm happy with these bars so I'll just keep cutting hopefully it's not boring for you I actually find it quite therapeutic to do and to watch so hopefully my customers that like this soap will be salivating over the soap if you can salivate over soap i don't know i love that little click sound at the end just to add to the satisfaction of cutting soap this is quite a good uh soap cutter like i said the wire is great for soft oiled soap and to, for some firm oil soap but for tallow uh, no we also found um, with tallow soaps with beef, ta beef tallow and sheep tallow the iodine and the INS levels are ideal I might show you what I use as my recipe and you can see that they're both in the green range um, it's just the special nature of tallow it's just um, yeah, it's a wonderful ingredient. Literally, it's wonderful because I don't need to add anything. Um, and also because I have customers that really want 
just the pure tallow soap that is all saturated fat because of um, the difference between saturated monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat. Um, so we're going to have a little baby end, if I can tell already. Oh, it's just a sliver. Ah, that was good to watch. Just a sliver. And you can see again the gel phase through here. Like I said, if I wait longer, that's goodbye Charlie, as my dad would say. It'll be too hard. Thank you for watching.